once again, uh, title your notes radical functions because a radical means square, it's a square root, it's a symbol for square root. So our objective for today, I can evaluate and graph radical functions. Let's read it together, one, two, three. I can evaluate and graph radical functions. So today we're doing two things. We're evaluating and we're graphing. So first let's find out what radical functions are. At the beginning of the year, we already introduced linear functions that gave us lines. Remember, we graph lines. From there, we went into quadratic functions, which gave us quadratic uh, equations or parabolas. From there, uh, we went into rational functions, which were equations that have fractions. So today, radical functions, what are they? Here we go. Radical functions are a function whose rule contains a variable under the square root sign. A radical function is a function whose rule contains a variable under the square root sign. Radical function is a function whose rule contains a variable under the square root sign. Example, y equals square root of x, 8 times square root of x equals y, y equals square root of 2x plus 1, and y equals 3 times square root of x over 2 minus 6. Copy those. So, according to the definition, it says a function whose rule contains a variable under the square root. Here's my square root. Is there a variable inside? Yes. Same here. Same here. Same here. In order to be a rule, one of the things that you need to note is the fact that it has an equal sign. And remember, when we got to functions, y could also be substituted by f of x. Remember that? That indicates that it's a function. But once again, it has to be f of x equals to something. Okay, so we got that. Let's find out what is not a rational function. I mean, radical function. We got square root of x, y equals x plus square root of 16, and negative 3 plus x equals to 10. So now, according to the definition, we found out what radical functions are. Right? So think about it. Why are these non examples? Why are these non examples? Talk it over with your neighbor. Why are these non examples? So. so, the most important thing to remember this one you said it didn't have an equal sign, so it has to be an equation. And it also needs to contain a variable under a square root. It has to be an equation, and it has to contain a variable under a square root. Steps, write these down, please. Once again, critical attributes is that it has to be an equation. <laughs> And it has, has to contain a variable under the square root. Cut three steps. Number one, to evaluate, comma, substitute values for x and simplify. So that's one thing that we're going to do. Step one is one of the things that we're going to do today, today to be uh, radical functions. What is it to evaluate? How do we evaluate? Substitute values for x and simplify. Okay, what is the second thing we're doing? We're going to graph. And for graphing, we use the last three steps. Step two, to graph, comma, identify the domain. That's one thing. Second thing, use the domain to, to build your input-output table. And step three, graph the function. So those are the three steps that we need to graph. What are they? To graph, we identify the domain. Use a domain to build an input output table and graph the function. Copy those, please. All right, so we got our steps. So the first thing we're going to do right now, we're going to evaluate. So we're going to start with example 1a. Copy this down, please. Example 1a. It says the function y equals 8 times the square root of x gives the speed in feet per second of an object in free fall after falling x 
feet. Find the speed of an object in free fall after it has fallen 16 feet. So copy that please. Example 1A. You don't have to copy everything, just the black text. <laughs> the, no, you don't have to copy where it says additional example 1A, value is square. Okay. Yes, copy that please. Alright, pens, pencils down, eyes up here. Focus please. I'm going to go over this one. Pay attention please. Okay, it says, the function y equals 8 times square root of x gives the speed in feet per second of an object in free fall after falling x feet. Find the speed of an object in free fall after fall, it has fallen 16 feet. So check this out. So this one only will apply step one of the ones that we wrote. What did step one say? To evaluate. Substitute values for x and simplify. So check this out. I'm going to write my function first. y equals 8 times square root of x. So when a number and a variable are side by side or next to the radical, it means multiplication. That's why I do this. y equals 8 times square root. And then I'll substitute. What is the value? 6 singles in here. So from there it's y equals 8 times, where the 16 is? 4. So y equals 32 feet per second. Copy that. And that's it. That's what that is to evaluate. Copy that, please. Yeah, me too. So it says, Find the speed of an object in free fall after falling 16 feet. So our answer is 32 feet squared. Okay? I mean, feet per second. I'm sorry. So let's do another one. You do this next one by yourself. Uh, on this one, we're only evaluating. We'll get to graphing that in a second. So I want you to put the wiggle going down like this. And I want you to do the next one. I want you to do the next one right next to it. Here it goes. All I'm going to do is switch a value. Everybody look up. I'm going to switch this value. So instead of 16, I'm going to make that 49. Find me the, find me the speed of an object in free fall if, after it has fallen 49 feet. feet and it, it's the same function. It's the same function. Go. So here goes the process. You should have written y equals 8 square root of x. y equals 8 times square root of 49. y equals 8 times 7, because square root of 49 is 7. Therefore, y equals 56 feet per second. Hands if you got that. Okay. So that is correct. Now let me show you something really quick. Pens down, eyes up here. Now these seem very, very simple. But why? Let me show you why. Because the 16 and the 49 are perfect square numbers. However, what would happen if this was not a perfect square number? No, we, we're not going to skip it. We're going to find the decimals. So with that said, copy this down. Example 1B. Okay, so copy this one. <laughs> copy this one. So you don't have to copy the entire words because you already have them, but copy now it's 20 feet. But look at the question at the end, or the instructions. It says, run your answer to the nearest test. That means that we're going to get a decimal. So let's do this one together. Here we go. First things first, we write y equals a times the square root of x. Y equals 8 times the square root of what? 20. 20. Then you're going to write y equals 8 and then open up parentheses. Let's find out how to get the square root of 20. We've done this before. But I'm going to revisit that again. So I'm going over here. Everybody look up. I'm going to go over here. So this is square root of 20 
What is a perfect square number before 20? Listen to what I'm saying. What is a perfect square number before 20? 16. And what is a perfect square number after 20? Okay, so we got those. So check this out. This is how I find my decimal number or my estimation. My wiggles or approximately. Square root of the smallest one, which is 16. So this is going to be 4 point something. Let's find that something. Here we go. It's not 0.5. Let's find out how do we find the decimal. Here we go. The middle minus the smallest one. What is 20 minus 16? 4 over the largest minus the smallest one. What is that? Largest minus the smallest one is 9. And now we can simplify this by writing it as a division and finding our decimal. How many times does 9 fit in there? It doesn't. Add a decimal and a 0. 9 times 4, that's 36. Subtract. Bring down the 4. Add a 0. What do you notice? It repeats. So this is 4.4. .4. So that is square root of 20. So here instead of square root of 20, what do I write? 4.4. .4. Therefore, y is approximately 4.4 .4 times 8. That's 32. I got 3. 32 plus 3, that's 35. This is 35.2 feet per second. That's how you find your decimal. Now, you do need to know how to do these because when we graph on the table, you're going to end up with estimations and you need to know how to do this process. That's why I did this one using colors to re revisit. We did this at the beginning of the year. We also did it halfway through the semester. And here it comes again. Okay? So, once again, the other ones were fairly easy. Why? Because they were perfect squared numbers. You're good with those. But the ones that get funner are these. Okay? So, with that said, let's go to finding the domain. Now, check this out. Before we go into graphing, I need one step for everybody to understand. So, copy this one down, please. Example 2A. Copy this and this. Then skip a line. Copy this and this. Now, at the beginning of the year, when we introduced radicals, I still remember that we made our little tree, remember? No, the, the family root tree, remember? That we did a tree, and then we put your name in the middle of it, and then you put your parents' name, stuff like that. So anyways, and I said, to find the square root of 16, it means that one number times itself gives us 16. So one number times itself gives us 16. Or what other number times itself gives us 16? Negative times a negative is a positive. So it's a negative 4. Therefore, the square root of 16 is plus minus 4. Are we there? Okay. However, this one I said at the beginning of the year that we were not going to use this one until you got to algebra 2 because this had a specific name. And I said, one number times itself gave us negative 16. You said, there is a none. Because some of you said negative 4 times 4. Yeah, but uh, the rule is, one number times itself is negative 4, 4. No. So there's none. And I said, these are known as imaginary numbers. Therefore, when you get to algebra 2, you'll be dealing with these. So we're not going to worry about these. But what I do want you to understand is that this one has a negative. Are we there? So we understood that we can find square root of positive numbers except for negative numbers. Are we there? And I said, also, can we find a square root of zero? Yes. What is square root of zero? Zero. So with that rule in mind, what can we conclude that we can substitute in here? Think about it. What numbers can we substitute in for x? to find the square root of x. Think about it. What would be one of the one of the numbers? 
One, what other number? Two, what other number? Zero. Can I substitute negative one? Why not? Because they are imaginary and we don't need imaginary numbers. So what we're saying is that x could be greater than zero. Could it be zero? So therefore it could be greater than or equal to zero. This tells us what we can substitute in here. Is that correct? Well, guess what? Notice this one. Is this a function? Yes. Why? Because it's got an equal sign. Is it a radical function? Yes, it's got a radical and a variable. To find the domain, all we do is take whatever's inside of the radical and write it greater than or equal to zero. So what's inside of the radical? X greater than or equal to zero. And that's how you find the domain. Are they all going to be this simple? No. Watch the, this next one. Copy this next one down. Example 2B. Funner. Here it goes. Copy these. It says, find the domain of each square root function. We have y equals 1 plus square root of x minus 4 and y equals square root of 4 times x plus 3. Copy those and we're going to do those together first. So, here they only ask us to find the domain. They're not asking us to graph, but check this out. To find the domain, I said, take whatever's inside of the radical. So, to find the domain, take whatever's inside of the radical, x minus 4, and write it greater than or equal to 0. Now, is this already solved? What can I do to solve it? Add 4, add 4. So my domain is x greater than or equal to 4. Now, why is this so important? Because if I was to ask you to graph this, I need to build a table. So what does that mean? That our table has x values. Where would I start with my x values? At 4, and this is greater than or equal to 4, so what would be the next number? 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth. Do you understand that? Let's do this next one together. Let's find the domain of this one. Here we go. So, what do I write, uh, Pablo? Very good. 4 times x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. So from there. Now some of you want to distribute, but check this out. I'll get rid of the 4 before I distribute. What is the 4 doing here? Multiplying. So we divide by 4, divide by 4. We're left with x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. What's my last step? Subtract 3, subtract 3, x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So what does that mean? That if we build our input out the table, where do I begin my domain? Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Yes. Less than 0? No. Why do, Why can I? Yeah. All right. Let's do another one. Copy this one down, please. You do this one. Find the domain of y equals square root of 2x minus 1. Copy that. And find me the domain, please. y equals 2x minus 1. You have 30 seconds. Okay, here we go. So to find the domain, oh well, domain, I write whatever is inside of the radical, 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. What do I do from there? 
add 1, add 1, 2x greater than or equal to 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, x is greater than or equal to 1 half. Or 0 0.5 is fine. And what does this mean? That in our domain for our table, we start at 1 half. What would be my next number? 1. Next one. You want to continue using decimals? No, what this is is starting at what? One half. So therefore I could go two, three, four, or you can use decimals up to you. But you you have to start at what? One half. Greater than or equal to one half. Are we there so far? Okay, now the only thing that we have left is to graph one of these. Now we know all the process, how to find the domain, how to build our table. So now let's graph one. Copy this one down. Example two. Oh, and by the way, everybody look up before we graph. Our graph should look like this. It has to curve. Because some of you are going to want to do something like this. Watch. You're going to start getting points, and it's going to more look like a straight line. No, we're not in linear functions anymore. We are in radical, radical or square root functions. That's why it has to be a curve. So with that said, copy this down, please. Example 3a. Graph y equals square root of x minus 3. So the first thing that we need to do is what? Find the domain. So you're going to write domain. And we're going to write what? x minus 3 greater than or equal to 0. Let's solve. Add 3, add 3. x is greater than or equal to 3. From there, we build our table. x, y. What are my values that I start with? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I'll stop right there. All right, so let's fill our table first. Actually, let me build my, my coordinate plane. And by the way, who noticed that the graph was only on the first quadrant? That the graph, if they just showed the first quadrant, that means this area, we only need this area. We don't need these over here, so this function. So here we go. Let's find our first value. What number do we need to substitute into our function? 3. So what is 3 minus 3? What is square root of 0? 0. So that's my first point. x is 3. 1, 2, 3. y is 0. So it stays here. That's my first point. Next one. What is my next number that I substitute? That I substitute? 4. What is 4 minus 3? What is square root of 1? 1, so my next number is 4, and 1 is y, so it's about right there. Next one, my next value is 5. What is 5 minus 3? What is square root of 2? Oh, here we go. This is not a perfect square. So what number comes before it? 1. What number comes after? 4. So this is approximately 1 point something. Let's find that something. Subtract these, that's 1. Subtract these, that's 3. So it's 1.3, 1.3. So this is 5, 1.3 is about right there. Because 2 is right here, 1.3 is there. Next one, 6. What is 6 minus 3? So what is square root of 3? Let's see, it's between 1 and 4. So same process, this is 1 point, subtract this, this is 2. This is 3, I mean, yeah, 3. So what is 2 thirds? 1.6. This is 1.6. 1.6 is about right there. Go to 7. What is 7 minus 3? What is square root of 4? 2. So this is 7, 2. And I'll stop right there. Let's sketch our graph. Remember, it has to curve a little bit, like so. Draw an arrow at the end, and that's our function. And that's all you're doing for homework. First one you evaluate, the next one you graph.
So our homework for tonight is found on page 702, numbers 1 through 19 odd. Okay, I'll be here for tutoring. Uh, hold on to your Saturday Academy slips, turn them in tomorrow. So I'll see you at tutoring. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your homework. Bye. Yeah, I'll stay here. Are you